Here is the current protocol I'm following to get shredded by summer so you can just copy me without thinking too much about the process. The main factors we're going to consider in this protocol are what you eat, your diet, your training, weight training and cardio, your needs, which is how many calories you burn throughout the day outside of the gym, as well as the rest and recovery required to maintain the muscle you currently have and maybe even build some depending on your fitness level. The first step of this protocol is to add 15 minutes of hit cardio at the end of each workout while also removing any snacking throughout the day. As you probably already know, to lose weight, it's calories in, calories out. You gotta be in a calorie deficit. So to help maintain that, I've added 15 minutes of hit cardio to increase my calorie output. And when you do cardio, your body releases less ghrelin. Ghrelin is the hormone in charge of hunger, meaning the more cardio you do, you may need to eat more, but you will not feel as hungry throughout the day. So it will really help to suppress your appetite. And removing any snacking, mainly because you're trying to reduce your calorie input, so this way you can be in the deficit much easier. Well, I'm, the way I'm doing this, I'm not tracking my calories. In my main meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'm still eating the normal amounts. The whole idea behind this is just to do micro changes, see what that gets me. If I reach my goal with that, perfect. If I don't, cool. Then we'll move to step two of the protocol. Now, I would do this first step for two weeks to see where I'm currently at, and I would increase the amount of cardio I do after the first week from 15 minutes into 20 minutes. And the way I would format this hit cardio is I would do, after I'm fully warmed up, I would do 40 seconds of moderate intensity, which is a rate of perceived exertion 6 slash 7 out of 10, followed by 20 seconds of all out 9 out of 10, going as fast as I can, rinse and repeat for 15 to 20 minutes. The main reason why I recommend hit over steady state is because studies have shown that HIIT cardio is much better for preserving muscle mass in comparison to steady state cardio. Now, nothing wrong with steady state cardio. If you enjoy doing it, then go ahead. The important thing is, it's kind of home cardio that allows you to be in a calorie deficit with as less friction as possible. You don't wanna to have to use your willpower and discipline to do it. So if you do enjoy steady state, go ahead. But I also find with HIIT cardio is that it takes a very little amount of time, making it very easy just whack in at the end of your workouts without having to make cardio like a big part of your day because I know most people hate it. Step two is to reduce the volume of food that you eat while maintaining a high protein diet. Now, you don't need to necessarily track calories yet. That's more towards step three but you should have a general idea of what kind of foods you eat. I just want you to aim to eat a little bit less, slightly smaller portions, nothing too crazy, while maintaining a high protein diet. So keeping your chicken, your meats, your eggs, all that in there, don't touch that at all, keep it high protein. And then again, the idea behind this is, it's gradual changes. Step one, you are able to add a bit more cardio, reduce snacking, see what that gets you. Okay, cool. Now step two, reduce the volumes of food, keeping a high protein. And what you'll find by reducing the volumes of food, you will naturally begin to reduce carbs. That's because you don't really want to affect your protein intake. Most people's fat intake isn't that high as carbs that they consume the most because most calorie condensed foods tend to be carb based normally. So which means for you, because you won't be having as many carbs as you normally would, I want you to purposely have majority of your carbs as a pre-workout, an hour and a half slash two hours before training. This way, you're able to reduce your calorie input while also having minimum negative effect on your training. You're still getting that glycogen, being that pump during your workouts. Now, with step two, we need to keep doing this for two weeks and see what kind of progress you are making. If you are making a linear weight loss progress, perfect. We find you're losing weight week by week, looking a bit leaner, then stick to it and reach where you're going as possible. And that's the goal achieved. But if you find that you hit a plateau or your weight isn't going down, then instead of simply brainlessly reducing the volume of food they eat, instead I want you to move on to step three, which is to start tracking calories as well as consuming non-caloric condensed foods. This is the last one because it's the hardest one to stick by because treating your diet to that much of a change as well as tracking calories is a lot of effort and cause a lot of friction throughout your day as well because it's a few things you have to go out of your way to do and most people end up failing at this and the reason why i have this protocol as two weeks then step two two weeks then step three i want this change to be as gradual as possible because most people are doing everything at once and then they just fail that's not what i want to do because what you'll find is that 90 percent of people will achieve the physique they want get lean get beach lean by just doing the first two steps this third step is either a if you hit a plateau and you just have no idea what to do or B, you're trying to get to single digits and body fat, like shredded. 
And if you're a guy trying to get girls, then you don't need to be that lean. You can be 10 11% absolutely fine, which is also the optimal amount for your hormones and testosterone levels. Now, as for the non-caloric condensed foods, what that basically means are foods that are high in volume, but low in calories. Everyone's seen like the Instagram reel that they're like, oh, for this one bag of potato chips, you can have 1 million berries or something like that. So non-calorie condensed foods are for like your fruits, vegetables, because usually they are very low calorie, but very high in volume. Things like your chicken, steak, eggs, and meats, these are foods that are high in protein and very healthy. And because they're high in protein, your body spends more energy to digest it, as well as because it spends more time and energy to digest it, it's helped to keep you full for longer, meaning you can eat more of it without feeling as much hunger or as much cravings. Also, avoid sugar. Sugar spikes up your glucose and will make you hungry. Whenever you have stuff that's high in sugar, you find your body will want more and more and more and more because it makes your glucose spike up and stays high for a little while, then goes back down and when I refill it back up. And it's really hard to eat well and stay disciplined when your blood levels are just going all the time. And also go online. Once you know what kind of foods that are non-calorie condensed that you like eating, just find some recipes for them and maybe even meal prep them. The recipes take too long to make. Just simple. If you like chicken type of chicken salads, low calorie meal prep, and you'll find millions of recipes on YouTube. Now, the last part of this video is what if you're someone who has really bad discipline and low willpower and just can resist cravings no matter how hard you try. There's a few tactics you can implement to help increase your willpower and discipline, or at the very least, make it easier to do the right thing. These things include stuff like meditation. Meditation has directly shown to increase activation in your prefrontal cortex, which is the logical thinking part of your brain, while also decreasing activation in the amygdala, which is the back of your head, which is your emotional and anxiety and all negative emotions really get made. By meditating, you're able to reduce those cravings because what you'll find is after two weeks of meditation, eventually there's almost like this weird barrier of logical thinking between you and your decisions. You're about to go eat junk food, but your brain will almost stop you and go, wait, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm trying to get abs by summer. This really isn't good for me. Uh, I could just eat this other thing that I already made, which is cheaper anyway, and it's going to fill me up regardless. So I'll go with that. That's how your brain begins to function after a long period of meditation. So if someone who's really struggled with discipline, I recommend you try it out. Another way to make sticking to your diet much easier is to minimize decision fatigue. Now, decision fatigue is a concept where humans make over tens of thousands of decisions per day. And with each decision we make, they get a little bit worse and worse and worse because they get more tired, more fatigue, which is why I so say you'll go grocery shopping and you're buying like a chocolate bar that you don't even want or need, but you're like, oh, should I get it? Oh, fuck, I should have spiked in there. So the idea behind this is if you are going shopping for groceries for the week, what I want you to do is go in your notes app or pen and paper, whatever, and write down exactly what you're going to buy. You're going to buy eggs, chicken, milk, whatever, etc. Then when you go and buy those stuff, only buy the things you have written down, nothing else. Because what you'll find is when you go to a grocery store, you have all these aisles and choices. Oh, this new product, should I try that? Oh, I might have family over, should I buy some chocolate? Oh. But by having a concrete list, you are not thinking about what you are doing, you are just doing. You're just buying those groceries and that's it. And even, if, and even if you forgot something important, just forget about it and get it the next day. This way, you won't have a bunch of junk food or high calorie foods that you don't really want or need in your house. You can just avoid that process entirely by minimizing decision fatigue. Now, the last two things I wanna talk about in this video are app training and needs. Regarding app training, should you train abs every single day if you are cutting? Because I can imagine you want to lose weight to have a six pack. No, no, you should not train abs every single day. The fact that most intermediate lifters and advanced lifters think that is mind boggling to me. Think about it, any other muscle group, you would train it, push it to failure, get stomped, get sore, gets damaged. And then two to three days later, you would train that muscle again after it's fully recovered because the way muscle is built is you're literally tearing it apart and then giving it a few days for it to recover using protein and nutrition so it grows bigger and stronger. So with your abs, the exact same principle applies. You gotta train them once or twice a week. Using exercises, we can apply progressive overload. Most guys do like 100 sit-ups or like a million crunches, stuff like that. And that will not build your ab muscles at all. What you want to do, you want to pick an exercise like cable crunches or hanging leg raises where you can apply progressive overload, train it in sets of 
three, 10 reps, as you would with any other muscle group. You're learning how to do any crazy hit ab circuits. And regarding your needs, which is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, the only thing I invite you to do is just walk around more, try to reach 10K steps per day, or walk in a park or something, and move around more around the house and just avoid being still for long, dura long durations of time. I know it sounds very simple and minimal, but you will find it will have a huge impact in amount of calories burned throughout the day. because It can really build up, just like how having small snacks can also really build up. Now, this is the end of the video. Hope you guys find it helpful. If you have any questions about this or anything you're unsure about, put it down in the comments down below. We're we'll happy to get back to you. If you like online coaching custom programs, you can get direct supervision and lose weight by me, then feel free to email me at the email in the description down below. Thank you for your time and attention. It's a valuable resource and I appreciate you giving it to me and I'll see you in the next video. Capiche?